This video is going to be a little different. A little weird, spoilery, and a lot of me. I want to give you a heads up before I start here, but I'd be more than happy if you stayed a while. So I'd like to think that I'm pretty well versed when it comes to anime and manga. Some of my favorite stories of all time call these mediums their home. But there was always this looming presence over my head that bothered me for some time. That being, I never got into One Piece. I knew what it was, but I couldn't tell you anything of substance about anything in the story. For those who don't know what it is, One Piece is a long-running manga series that dates back to 1997. It got its start in Weekly Shonen Jump, a very famous magazine publication, and later was adapted into an anime in 1999, produced by Toei Animation. The creator of the series, Ichiro Oda, started officially writing One Piece when he was in his early 20s. However, he started planning and having the ideas for it when he was still in school in his teens. And these weren't just some general concepts, Oda apparently had a lot of the story structure of One Piece planned out already in school. This makes it even more impressive that One Piece has continuously been running with very minor breaks since its inception. That is truly dedication to your vision. And with such love, the series has quite the fandom to say the least. One Piece is the best selling manga of all time and has garnered a following that some may deem cultish. Oda, who is now 49 by the time I'm writing this, has a net worth of around $200 million and has outsold both Dr. Seuss and J.K. Rowling. Know your fucking place, trash. With statistics like that and hype around the series, how could you not get into it? Well, the series is notorious for its length. However, that hasn't stopped me before with other projects. I do love me some JRPGs, so I have no excuse to pick up some books and read. And read I did. I decided to go on an adventure, starting in 2022 and getting caught up in 2023. Yeah, it took me a bit. I was truly enthralled in the world, and it gave me something to focus on when I was going through a big transition in my life. I graduated college in 2022, and for those of you going through it or have gone through it, you know how it's a very stressful change. Having an outlet like that was comforting in my mind. It was escapism, following Luffy and the Straw Hat crew exploring vast lands outside of the reality where I sit in a cubicle and work my 9 to 5. I even got into the card game, which was new at the time. I won't get into it here, because it really deserves its own Bear Bites video, but that allowed me to make new friends and get outside of my social comfort zone. I still carry that with me, and it helps me on those days where the real world takes hold. One Piece got me through that. Then I was diagnosed with cancer. My world shifted, and I talked about this before, but I can't put into words the emotional drift I felt. I was lost in a sea of depression, and I didn't know if I would be okay or not. Was I dying? Why should I even be here if I was dying? Who even knows what I'm going through right now? I rarely felt in the mood to talk to anyone. I was alone, and it took a lot for me to get up and live each day. I was adrift and drowning, and as silly as it may sound, this story reached out to me again. And upon further inspection, I garnered a new outlook on not only One Piece, but my life as a whole. Today, I want to offer you all kindness. This is a cancer patient's perspective on One Piece. Let's start this ramble off with something simple. Even if you haven't experienced One Piece in its many forms, you could probably surmise that it's an adventure story, traveling to distant lands and exploring the unknown. Revelation of the year, I know. Despite this, I genuinely think that it is one of Oda's most compelling traits as a creator. This is a long-running series, and no two islands ever felt similar in the span of that time. That takes a lot of skill and imagination, and it makes the start of every arc even more compelling as a reader. It is like opening one of those event calendars, you never know what you're gonna get. Is it some future island with technology years in advance, or an island full of furries? Who's to say? What's your persona? Of course, one could claim that it started off a little more dull in the East Blue, I mean Orange Town and Syrup Village are very alike. Call it the author getting his feet wet or what have you, but it didn't last long at all once the Alabasta Saga started. Which did start in 1999, so that is a damn good track record. All of this to say is that One Piece takes you to worlds that pull you from reality. And reality, in the sense that I am talking about, is cyclical in nature. That word, cycle, has carried a lot of meaning to me this year, and frankly it will forever be tainted once I'm done with this. Anyone who has gone through chemo, or has had a loved one go through it, knows what this word carries. Essentially, your medical oncologist gives you a number at the start of treatment, which can vary depending on a variety of different factors, and you repeat your regimen that many times. 
for me, currently going through the map regimen, I have six cycles, each lasting about five weeks. I have completed four cycles by the time this video is being recorded, but there is an extra layer of repetition for my treatment specifically that I neglected to mention. MAP is an acronym, and the M stands for methotrexate, which is one of my chemo drugs that I get twice each cycle. Comparatively, it is physically the easiest drug to endure. Adriamycin, the red devil, and cisplatin, which doesn't even start with a P, are way more physically intensive. Physically intensive. Mentally, however, methotrexate takes the cake. You see, when you get chemo, there is usually a set time to administer the drug. 48 hour drip, then you can go home. 30 minute push, then you can go home. Not methotrexate though. After your 4 hour drip, you stay in the hospital for as long as it takes to clear your system within a certain margin. Let me repeat, as long as it takes. So this is what my week would look like. I would go in on a Tuesday, meet with my team, wait for a damn hospital room which would take forever and is a topic for another time. After that, I would get my pre-meds and start the drip. Once the drip is done, it is waiting time. IVs of antidote and fluids would be pumped in me and I would get a blood test every 24 hours to see if my number was low enough. If I failed, then that is another day I would have to be in the hospital waiting for another blood test. Eventually, I would pass, most likely on a Saturday, but then it would hit me that I would have to do this all over again Tuesday. And this is if it went well. I had an unfortunate experience where I was in the hospital for two weeks straight because the drug wouldn't clear and I had to go back to back weeks. So I celebrated my birthday in the hospital this year. But what I'm trying to say is that my regimen, my experience, was multiple cycles within a greater cycle. A layered cake of Groundhog's Days. It does something to you mentally when the window view of your hospital room might as well be a static painting. You just want to escape and go on an adventure. You get ready every day and look at yourself in the mirror and beg to whatever will is out there, let me see the world. Of course, I can't change the now but once I'm done with treatment, I will do just that. However, in those moments in the hospital, I pick up one piece for that escapism. Hearing stories of people going off to see the world, it helps me feel like I'm going on an adventure with them. It's fictitious, sure, but I think fiction, in its purest form, can act as an antidote for the real world. Not as a substitute, but as a comfort for the mind. I think all of us, to a certain degree, understand mortality. And I think for younger people, including myself, it comes from the stories that are told to us. Whether fictional or not, you are shown that life is something that is given and can be taken away. Person enters, person does some stuff, then person leaves. Simple. I'm dead. One Piece is no exception to this, of course. Although there are some instances where a character should have stayed dead, mortality is ever-present in Oda's world. For crying out loud, the catalyst of the whole story is the execution of the Pirate King. But when I say ever-present, don't confuse that with everywhere. Oda's world is famous for not portraying death everywhere. Which leads me to say that what I love about death in One Piece is that it isn't flimsy or filled for filler's sake, but rather calculated with purpose. In a lot of stories, especially in anime, there is a sense that more death is more exciting and that it carries edge and action. And while I agree that it activates my neurons too, after a while I just get bored. Think of how many heroes have died in superhero comics only to come back in a few issues. Oh, don't act so shocked, you phonies! You know how this works. In a few months, a magic amulet will bring him back, or we'll find some alternate dimension green arrow that's exactly like the one we had before. Hell, I love Dragon Ball, but after a certain point in the story, death is basically just a timeout area. But for One Piece, not only was death permanent, but the impact of said death had consequences. And when I say consequences, most people probably assume I mean the giant world-sweeping ones. Your aces and your white beards, just to name a few. And to clarify, yeah, those are some massive consequences in Legacy. But the one that really got me as a reader, something that I still think about to this day, is of a relatively minor character. In fact, his legacy and consequences on the story are pretty minor as well. Most readers after a while probably forget the guy's name, but I can't help but think of Dr. Hiraluk. For those who don't know of him or don't remember him, Dr. Hiraluk was Chopper's father figure and original mentor. He's a major quack, to put it lightly, but his heart is in the right place. After all, that's what matters most when you're trying to treat someone with an illness, right? Well, that aside, he found new meaning in his life after being magically cured of an incurable disease after looking at some cherry blossoms and made it his life's mission to cure every illness. To varying success. 
He resided in the Drum Kingdom where he met a beaten chopper and brought the reindeer in as his own. Good times ahead, except here Luke's disease came back and Chopper tried to cure him. He poisoned him instead with a mushroom soup, but this is all besides the point. Before Dr. Hero Luke dies, in what essentially culminated in self-destruction, he gave this mini monologue that I can't get out of my head. Hey, when do you think a person dies? When a bullet from a pistol pierces his heart? No. When he's attacked by an incurable disease? No. When he eats a soup of deadly poisonous mushrooms? No! A man dies when people forget him. <laughs> Even if I should disappear right now, my dream will come true. And when it does, the citizen's sickness of the heart will be cured as well. Mortality, let alone legacy, are things that I didn't think I needed to reconcile with at the age of 24. I mean, this is something you have a midlife crisis for, right? But in a position of the least amount of control, here I am. Like I said in the intro, I spent a lot of the later half of 2023 and into 2024 severely beaten down. I couldn't find enjoyment in other people, I couldn't find enjoyment with myself, and it all stemmed from the unknown. I was staring down the barrel of a gun and I didn't even know if the thing was loaded or not. I didn't know, and frankly I still do not 100% know, if this cancer would kill me. You get a lot of statistics thrown at you when you're a cancer patient, but like my oncologists say, you are not a statistic. Life each day isn't something guaranteed, so why treat this any different? Every world has its end. I know that's kind of sad, but... That's why we gotta live life to the fullest in the time we have. At least, that's what I figure. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it was easy to process. It took a lot of therapy and internal reflection. And what I came out with is all too similar to what Dr. Hero Luke represents for me. At this moment, Bear Bites is my legacy. Each day, I have the opportunity to add on to that list and hopefully touch the lives of more and more people. Each day is a day that lets me live a bit longer after I'm gone, whether through my work or just me living. Each day is an opportunity to put more good into this world and let the cherry blossoms bloom. When all is said and done, I can claim that I've lived a marvelous life, and One Piece helped put me in the right headspace. I think if we all came together and decided on what the overarching theme of One Piece is, we'd probably all say hope in unison. There's a lot of layers to that word though, so I'm sure some people's interpretations of hope would be different from others, but this is my video, so I'll just go off of what I think. When I say hope is the driving theme of One Piece, I mean in a sense that each character, good or bad, has hope in a seemingly impossible dream. Insurmountable odds follow everyone throughout the series, and that is definitely where parts of the comedy come from. Like I mentioned earlier, Chopper wants to cure all diseases, Brooke wants to reunite with Laboon, a very specific whale in a vast ocean that may or may not even be alive when the crew returns to Reverse Mountain. Heck, we don't even know Luffy's real dream, but his own crew thought it was silly. Yet, as subtle as it may be, I think deep down they know he could still achieve it. The power of a character in the series is only as strong as the amount of hope they possess in their heart. And time and time again, we've seen the Straw Hats get through hell and back just off the sheer amount of hope they have. It really is beautiful to read, because through thick and thin, One Piece is just so positive, and it keeps reminding me of how strong a force that hope can be. I think having cancer is one of the few situations in life where hope is all you have. For those who don't know me in real life, I'm the type of individual that finds comfort in understanding the situation at hand. The more I know, the more I feel at ease. I quickly learned that this does not apply for cancer, at least for me. Dr. Google is a bitch and most of the time feeds you wrong stuff anyway. Like I said earlier, you're not a statistic, you're an individual who is going through their own experience. You may think that you're the average case of insert cancer here, but there's always something off that makes you different. Other than the fact that each person is different, however, that's besides the point. So what good does framing your understanding around probabilities and averages do? It's personalized, and once you understand and embody this idea like I did, you understand that hope is really all you have. And great things can come from that. I cannot stress how much strength hope can give you. 
even if things do go wrong, it excels your ability to persevere for the next round or the next go. When the Straw Hats got separated in Sabote, everyone didn't just give up. If that happened, then One Piece may actually be a normal manga length. Heck, you could go through each character and pinpoint a moment where they persevered with hope and determination in a situation where they could have given up. Like, imagine if Zoro just stopped after getting bodied by Mihawk. Zoro had no right in challenging him at that moment in the story, and not only did he, but he would go on and continue his dream. On top of that, he promised to never lose again. I mean, geez, if Zoro wasn't so racist, I would have to respect the guy. Joking aside, reading One Piece while going through all of this helped me recontextualize my cancer. Cause even if this is an unstoppable force, which it isn't, what good does not having hope do? I'd rather be hopeful and fail than succumb to despair and also fail. At the end of the day, the pursuit is what life is, not some point A to point B map. So by that logic, if you're not hopeful, then are you even living? I'm self-aware enough that taking something as serious as cancer and using it to discuss something as goofy as One Piece can maybe rub people off the wrong way. That's why I want to emphasize again that this is just me ranting about my own experiences to you, the viewer. I find comfort in the story and continue to find that comfort during this period in my life. It helps me and reminds me of the points that I just spent the whole video talking about. It really is easy to forget sometimes. It's easy to preach, but it does no good if I'm not putting any of this into practice, right? I want to leave you guys on one more thing. By the time this video comes out, I will be out of surgery and going into the second half of treatment. It's felt like an eternity since I've made that Fortnite video where I first came out with all of this news. I felt it would be appropriate to make this video as a midpoint in the journey and maybe even show some growth since then. So this is what I want to present to you publicly. For years, I have dealt with on and off bouts of depression that have shook me to my core. There have been moments that have taken a lot out of me and have put me into horrible places that I never want to go back to. My current situation has given me a new lease on life. Fuck cancer, don't get me wrong, but this entire year with all of its bullshit and hardship has given me something I never thought I would have. So for all of y'all watching, friends, family, strangers, whatever, let me say this. I want to live.